Hi everyone. So the first topic which I have selected to discuss with you all is a very high yielding topic and it is a must know for all the exams. So the topic as you can see is immunodeficiency. Today we will be concising it to an extent that we can read it in our last leap of preparation. And for that here is a table in front of you which we will be filling with all the high yielding points in the due course of time. You can also make this in your last 10 days revision notebook so that it is very easy for you to read a complex topic in just few minutes. To make you understand and concise the immunodeficiency disorders I've used first aid. I'll be using the 2022 year version page number 114. You can open your first aid along with me and just mark it there which you can read for all the important points and at the end of reading this you should have this ready so that you can revise it at the last moment which is even more concise than these two high yield pages of first aid. What all you need to remember is the immunodeficiency disorders are divided into three B cell, T cell and B and T cell both. Firstly we will be doing the dysfunctions of only B cell. Now B, T or B and T cell both will result in immunodeficiency right. So the features of immunodeficiency will be similar you will be getting a lot of infections but it is very tough to figure out that which immunodeficiency disorder exactly it is. So then we need to find out some of the important clues in the question. So first in B cell disorders you have three B cell disorders and the mnemonic is SACS. So first is selective IgA deficiency. The most important point is that it is the most common primary immunodeficiency disorder and uh, the hint in questions would be that it is majorly asymptomatic so you need to remember AAA's selective Ig along with all the A's. So it uh, is symptomatic and very importantly in first aid because first aid is also difficult to remember because it's very dense. You need to know the most important points. So whenever there's a history of blood transfusion and there is anaphylaxis, it is common in selective IgA deficiency patients as because the blood that is transfused has the IgA. So the recipient will mount an immune response against it. So this is an important clue. And next is that it can cause increased susceptibility to GRDSs, which is another question. Sorry. GRDSs and it can cause a false negative celiac test. A patient with celiac disease produces IgA antibodies and if there is selective IgA deficiency that test will not be positive as body will not produce IgA. Hence we will have a false negative celiac test. So the lab diagnosis is very simple. You will have only de decreased IgA along with normal levels of all other immunoglobulins. So the first disorder is done. Secondly we have two disorders which we will compare and read so it's easier to remember. X-linked A gamma globulinemia and CVID, common variable immunodeficiency, right? So in X-linked, you need to only remember the Bs. So selective IgM A's, X-linked, we need to remember the Bs. So the Bs are basically it is defect in BTK and there is B cell maturation is defective and it is common in boys. So if it is common in boys, we know that boys say X-linked recessive over. All X-linked recessive disorders are common in boys. Now BTK is involved, it's a tyrosine kinase and it is involved in maturation of pre-B cell to B cell. Now if this will not be there, if it is not function properly, no B cell will be formed. Hence there will be decrease in all immunoglobulins in the blood. So that will be your lab finding. In this only IgA in this all of the antibodies will decrease and a clinical clue will be there is absent lymph nodes and tonsil. If a child which, who does not have lymph nodes on examination is found, it is high likelihood that there is a disease known as X-linked A gamma globulinum, especially a boy. Okay, and because it's an immunodeficiency, hence all live vaccines are contraindicated. This is common for a lot of immunodeficiencies. Another important point, very Particular is there is recurrent enteroviral infections after six months because still six months the maternal antibody takes care. So after six months enteroviral infection and BBB, BTK, B cell maturation, boys. Right. Now comparing X-linked and CVID, we have that there is a defect in T-cell differentiation in CVID. Here it was maturation, here it is differentiation. Right? And here it was BTK gene, here the defect is in BAF gene. Another important point that we need to know is this was manifesting after 6 months of age. This manifests usually after puberty. Right. So 15 to 35 years is the age group. This isme there will be an infant, here it will be a young adult. 
and again in CVID because it is a differentiation defect we will have all the immunoglobulins which will decrease here we have absent germi germinal centers whereas here we will have germinal center hyperplasia right? and a specific point is that whenever you find this finding nodular lymphoid hyperplasia of intestine because there's pear patches in the lymphoid organ in the intestine so there will be germinal center hyperplasia here whereas the, here the germinal center will not be present there will be absent germinal centers so these are the three B cell disorders. Next we have the T cell disorder and the mnemonic is TEC, TEC 12. Actually what happens is whenever we are reading we read all the disorders and at the end of it we forget the first disorder itself. We forget where we started from and we forget the broad headings. So we would remember something like ha huh, something BTK, BTK was there but we will not remember where it is or we will not remember which is more common in boys or that. That's why we need to summarize it at the end of it. So here we have the mnemonic TEC 12. So first T, T say we have thymic plaza. This is very common question. So in this, this is basically the 20 Q11 microdeletion. So microdeletion, just an added point, is checked by fish, which is fluorescent in situ hybridization technique. So in thymic aplasia, basically there's failure to develop third and fourth pharyngeal pouch. Now a lot of times we are particularly asked which exact pharyngeal pouch is not developed. So thymus develops from the third pharyngeal pouch, hence the answer is the third pharyngeal pouch if you have third and fourth both an option. So we know this thymic aplasia by commonly known as the digeorge syndrome. Also variant of digeorge itself is velocardiofacial syndrome. So depending on the name velocardiofacial you have the palate, facial and the cardiac defect and in digeorge is easily remembered by the mnemonic. The clinical features are where mnemonic catch 22. Right so catch 22 may there will be cardiac defects the most common being TOF. There will be abnormal facies, thymic hypoplasia. Thymic hyperplasia will lead to the immunodeficiency as thymus is responsible for the T cells. And C said there will be cleft lip, cleft palate, and H it's hypoglycemia, hence it presents as tetany. Right, so on the lab investigation, we will basically have hypocalcemia and because there is a third and fourth pharyngeal pouch defect, even the parathyroid glands won't be formed. Therefore, there will be decreased parathyroid hormone, which will actually lead to the hypocalcemia. So the reason for hypocalcemia is hypoparathyroidism. Also, if you have a chest x-ray given, look at the thymus shadow. If it is absent, we could be pointing towards the thymic aplasia. Also note that thymus is usually absent uh, a lot of times. The shadow is not visible mostly in adults. But if a child, the chest x-ray is given, thymus is absent, they're pointing towards this condition. This is very important. The most frequently asked previous question. So you need to know all the points regarding this. The second effect we have is in our mnemonic tech 6 E say there is hyper IgE. So hyper IgE is remembered as I always use the mnemonic jobless. Jobless means job syndrome. From E we have hyper IgE and S we have the STAT3 mutation, right? So the STAT3 mutation leads to the deficiency of Th17 cells, hence the neutrophils won't be recruited to the sites of infection. Neutrophils are cells of acute inflammation. If there is no acute inflammation, we will have cold non-inflamed abscess. So hence the abscess or signs of acute inflammation like dollar, collar, rubber, they will be less marked. Hence the abscesses will be cold and not warm to touch on clinical examination. Because it's hyper IgE, we will have increased IgE levels on examination and IgE along with eosinophils these will be increased. So this is a mnemonic that is given in first aid itself A, B, C, D, E, F. So it is basically abscess will, will be cold. We have baby T310, coarse faces, dermatological problems like eczema because of IgE and eosinophils which are responsible for the allergic manifestations and increased IgE plus factors from minor trauma. Then we have something known as chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis, which is our C. So chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis, basically it's a non-invasive infection, again non-invasive in candidal infection of skin and mucous membrane. What happens is basically due to mutation in IL-17 or the gamma chain of IL-17 receptors. There are several reasons for CMC, but this is very common. Also, CMC happens due to mutation AIRE. Now, AIRE is a gene which is responsible for presenting the self antigens. Hence, if this is mutated, we will have autoimmunity, that is reaction against the own body tissues. So this will cause a syndrome 
APS. So APS is of two types, APS 1 and 2. Very important to remember that APS 2 is the more common one. I used to remember it as APS 2 is the common one. APS 2 has the endocrine disorders. So the endocrine disorders are hypothyroidism, diabetes type 1. So genetics, so it's diabetes type 1. And in APS 1, which is the less common one, we will have some rare endocrine thing like hypoparathyroidism and chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. So, hence uh, chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis can present as a part of APS1 as well. So, this is the only thing that we need to know in chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. Next in our mnemonic, we have 12. That is IL-12 receptor deficiency. Now, IL-12 receptor deficiency, the only two points that you need to know is that it can present after administration of BCG vaccine because whenever we administer BCG vaccine, we want a TH1 response so that we have a granuloma form and TH1 uh, this dif requires differentiation from IL-2 and in turn, TH1 produces IL-12 so that you can have the interferon gamma production. So, because this is not happening, you will not have a granuloma formation. Hence, you will not, the TH1 immunity would not function. Therefore, this infection can present after BCG vaccine. Suppose I am an IL-12 receptor deficient person. When you administer BCG to me, you can have disseminated mycobacterial as that BCG vaccine did not result in immunity but infection. And another important point that you note to know is that it is the most common cause of Mendelian susceptibility to mycobacterial diseases. So, these are the only two points that you need to remember in IL-12 receptor deficiency. Now, let's sum up both the B cell and the T cell cell disorders very quickly. This is the table that you want to fill. So, B cell disorders in selective IgA, you only have to remember this is the most common immunodeficiency. It increases susceptibility to giardiasis, right? Because mucosal immunity is hampered if IgA is not present, hence gut infections like giardia will come up. And we remember that it is only of AAA, so atopy, anaphylaxis to blood products. This is very important. These are the only things that you need to know in this. Now, let's compare CVID versus X-linked agama globulinemia. So, CVID, we spoke. So, CVID is a defect of BAF gene. It is a B-cell differentiation issue. Here, it's a B-cell maturation issue. Whereas, uh, here it is BTK gene. Right. Then, what is the other thing? That here, there will be germinal center atrophy. Hence, there will be no tonsil or lymph node. Lymph node or tonsil will not be present. Here there will be germinal center hyperplasia. So that's why we need to remember a finding in the intestine that is nodular hyperplasia of intestine is an important finding here. Okay, because there is hypertrophy of germinal centers. Now let's go to thymic aplasia. Thymic aplasia remember third pharyngeal pouch and remember that Dijot syndrome is the clinical manifestation remembered by the mnemonic CATS-22, cardiac, right? So, we will have cardiac in which the most common is TOF. And read this entire thing from first year that is as it is very very important. So mostly you should remember the most important previous question is third pharyngeal pouch of the world. Dijot syndrome or clinical syndrome is given hence you need to remember the clinical features as CASH22. There will be cleft palate, there will be hypocalcemia very important because of defective parathyroid hormone. Hyper Ig as I said remember it as jobless so it's job syndrome. Job syndrome E say so there is hyper IgE and as said there is stat mutation right so in this you know because the IgE is more we would have things like eczema stat mutation hence neutrophils won't be recruited hence you will have cold abscess so by this cold abscess is a very diagnostic feature Chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis, remember that it is part of APS1 and it is non-invasive infections of candida in this, it can present IL-12 receptor deficiency after BCG vaccine and it's the most common cause of Mendelian susceptibility to microbacterial diseases. Okay. Another point which we have forgotten, I think, in CVID and X-linked is that it presents after puberty usually. 
so in clinical scenario you won't have a very young infant here it presents after six months of age itself so this roughly sums up my both b cell and my t cell disorders in the next video we'll be discussing the disorders of combined b and t cell which are also very important thank you